someone out there waited over 20 years for a new Space Jam movie to come out, and come out it did. The question of the day, was it worth the wait? Was it worth the hype that that one person probably had in their head all these years? I'm gonna answer that question coming up on a new episode of Movie Feuds. Okay, we've come up on it. No! The original film features Michael Jordan, one of the greatest baseball players of all time. I'm joking. The film even makes fun of this fact. Obviously, he's known for basketball and his impeccable lineup of shoes. Joining him are a bunch of Looney cartoons called the, the Looney Tunes. You got Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Grandma, Lady, Tweety Bird. You got the whole, the whole crew's here. The whole cast is available. Even Pepe Le Pew, that frisky skunk that was deemed too inappropriate for the sequel. The sequel that features the characters from A Clockwork Orange in the background. So that's consistent. Why not just have Peppy hang out with them in the background since apparently they're both predators. As far as the human characters go, there's also Wayne Knight, AKA Newman, AKA Nedry from Jurassic Park. And then there's Bill freaking Murray. I haven't seen the original Space Jam since I was a wee child. So rewatching this film, I, I was expecting the worst. And I was kind of surprised by how, you know, how much little charm there is in this in this little thing. Do I think it's a great movie? No. Do I think it's it's good? Yeah, I think it kind of is. And you know why? Because movies are so bad now that I'm looking back on older ones and going, wow, there was actually a plot and acting and a focus. How bizarre. How strange. LeBron James is the star of the 2021 dare I call it a movie? I don't, 2021 marketing thing for Warner Brothers. He comes off a lot more unlikable than Michael Jordan did. Michael Jordan, they give him kind of the squeaky clean image. He's just kind of having fun. You know, he's playing baseball. He's trying something new. He's poking fun at himself. Everybody loves him in the in the movie. Everybody loves him in the universe. You know, uh, the, the tunes know who he is even. LeBron, however, can't even get his son Dom to like him. And I assume this is some sort of a weird prequel for Fast and the Furious because I don't know any other Doms in the world. I just know family. And that family includes Vin Diesel. Although I think Vin Diesel is white, but I'm not entirely sure. They can figure that out later. They can fix it in post. Some people are gonna jump to LeBron's defense now and say Adam's just a hater. He prefers Michael Jordan over LeBron when it comes to basketball. And I will reply with, I don't care. I don't follow basketball. I don't even know what team. I knew Michael Jordan was on the Bulls. It was hard not to, but I couldn't even, and I know LeBron's played on multiple teams over the years, so I don't even, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't, I couldn't list off six NBA players today. Looking at it from an acting standpoint though, LeBron just was just mean. He was mean in the film for the most part and the, the story didn't help. You know who is having fun? Don Cheadle, AKA LG Rhythm, AKA algorithm you see that play on words Ooh, that's as deep as this film gets i noticed a couple walking dead cast members in this film so that was kind of fun to see and as far as the tunes go the same roster from the originals back plus a billion others we have dc characters in this we have mad max fury road for for some reason i know the original referenced pulp fiction but they didn't spend three minutes in the pulp fiction universe that's the difference the first film realized how to reference something without alienating a certain group of people like oh that was a pulp fiction reference it lasts all of five seconds as opposed to the sequel that really plays up on this nostalgia for older people like hey look it they're inside of the matrix because there's a new Matrix coming out, so we need to talk about this movie constantly. That's right, the Looney Tunes may be in this, but they're far from the main characters. I'd argue LeBron's not even the main character. The main character is all the synergy, all the cross-promotion going on. You have King Kong in this, you have Iron Giant, you have the Flintstones, the Jetsons, the Batman characters, Superman. Rick and Morty even hoard themselves out for this. If Fortnite made a movie, it would be Space Jam A New Legacy. Remember Lola Bunny from the first movie? She's back, but not really. They pared her down just a little bit. And if you don't remember what she looked like in the first one, let me refresh your memory.
what the hell was happening with the animation department on this character? Lola Bunny's not just a typical anthropomorphic animal with great legs, fur, and can handle a basketball. She's a strong, furry lead. It's about time. While the new film has a whole lot of, wow, look at that character. Oh, 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 I know him. I know that reference. Wowza. It's the Animaniacs. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have Bill Murray. The original gets the point here. Imagine trying to explain the story of Space Jam A New Legacy to someone. It's borderline impossible, so I'm gonna start with the original. After what feels like a 20 minute intro of Michael Jordan Greatest Hits, we finally get to see him in action. Retired from basketball and joining the baseball league. He's not great, but fortunately for him it doesn't last too long because he's gonna soon be playing basketball again before he knows it. The reason the movie's called Space Jam is because we actually go into outer space to a planet called Moron Mountain where Danny DeVito and his minions are trying to figure out how to make their theme park more exciting. They're familiar with the Looney Tunes who live inside of the earth. So he sends his crew down there to kidnap them. Bugs Bunny's a crafty individual, so he figures out a way to kind of coerce the aliens to fight them in the game of basketball. I said fight them instead of play them in basketball, and I feel like that's appropriate because there's a lot of hitting and pushing and shoving, which I think would be called by the refs in a normal game. Bottom line is Marvin Martian does a really crap job refing this game. Beating these shrimpy little aliens should be a slam dunk, sorry. But they're crafty, and little did the Looney Tunes know that these aliens can inhabit the bodies of people, take their skill set, and put it inside of a basketball, which they can later then touch and become massively overpowered because of it. It's, who knew? Who knew that was a thing they could do? Why aren't they doing that? Con like, why stay in the slug form, you know? If you have that ability, why not, why not abuse it? Or at least use it once in a while. I mean, these, these things are a joke. The Looney Tunes become desperate and elicit the help of Michael Jordan via kidnapping. It's ironic. They do the thing that they don't want to have happen to them. The side story gets the most laughs from me as we follow Charles Barkley and some of the other characters without their basketball skills. So they're desperately trying to figure out what's going on. They're hospitalized. They're going to a palm reader. They're even trying to play a pickup game in the back alley with some kids. Nothing seems to work. The story really bounces between what's going on in the Toon world and the real world nicely. It's a good 50-50 split. Whereas the new film really focuses on LeBron and the relationship with his son. A little bit of confusion right out of the gates is the second film is called Space Jam, but there's no space. Although servers require space and take up space, so maybe they meant it like that. Like Space Jam, we're inside of a server. Server space. Oh, this movie keeps getting more complex and deep. I love it. The main storyline focuses on LeBron's son, Dom, and how he wants to develop video games, but his dad doesn't want him to because his dad wants him to play basketball because that's all LeBron knows. And so therefore his son should know that only and not be good at anything else. By the end of this film though, he's gonna realize that his son is in fact, maybe the best programmer the world has ever seen. Uh, he, he's designed some truly impressive stuff from a app that can capture a full range of motion and then live translate it to a coded character to a basketball game that seems to be thinking for itself on the fly with style points, with uh, just all sorts of wacky stuff that it conjures up. Now, part of this is thanks to the character Don Cheadle plays LG Rhythm, who is in fact an algorithm inside of uh, the servers that Warner Brothers houses in their very building. He kidnaps Dom in some sort of cockamamie scheme to lure in Dom's dad to play him in a game of basketball which will be televised for all the world to see. Why is he doing this? That's a great question. Nobody appreciates all the stuff that LG Rhythm does. So he pulls in a bunch of randos off the street into the game via their cellular devices or their TVs or their, anything they can really use that's connected to the internet he has access to and can pull in. Because Warner Brothers is super awesome and they develop such a smart character that he can do anything. LeBron probably could take on the Monstar Squad himself, but he's gonna elicit the help from the loonies again. This leads to a good chunk of the movie where we go on a bit of an Easter egg hunt through different movie properties to recruit the characters from the first film. Movies such as Casablanca and Austin Powers show up for reasons I can't possibly explain, but they're here. We love them, we, we know references. 
This movie's all references. As for the basketball playing itself, both movies leave the final act for that. In both games, it's a pretty one-sided affair for the first half with the, the points ranking up for the Monster Squad. But I would say in the second one, it's just completely nonsensical. I don't even know how, how points are added up or scored at all. It seems like they're just divvied out willy-nilly with no real thought process behind them. It's very clear after re-watching the first film that it was at least trying to tell the story that made even a lick of sense and to put a little creative thought into it and have some sincerity behind it. The sequel has none of that. It does not care about your time. It does not care about even producing something that has value behind it. It truly is a McDonald's Happy Meal of shit. And if you like that, I can't stop you from it, but I'm giving this round absolutely to the first film. Obviously, it's going to be an easy layup for 2021, right? I mean, the, the new technology, the new visuals, the new music, it, it's just such an easy play. I want you to slow your roll there, sir. It's not going to be that easy. I think you're forgetting truly inspiring visuals like this. That is frightening. Or how about Stan getting pumped up and then farting all over the place? Truly cinema reaching its peak. I will say Michael Jordan fits into the world pretty well. There's only a few spots where he looks kind of flat against the animated backdrops and whatnot. For the most part, a movie that came out in 1996, this holds up pretty damn well. The visuals are really nice. The animation's solid, it's crisp. Uh, there's a lot more Looney Tunes doing Looney stuff here. And not so much the whole look at this film property sort of thing. They're actually being their characters that we know and love. And oh man, that music. Everybody get up, it's time to slam now. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Do -do 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 -do. I wanna fly like an eagle into the sea. Fly like an eagle, let your spirit set me free. I wanna fly. Apologies, it's, it's just good stuff. I think the new film had music. There was too many sound effects and noise going on for me to really even pay attention. Certainly nothing that stood out the way that original does. However, the visuals are quite impressive in the new movie. I will not deny that for a second. Animation's vibrant, it's beautiful. The characters feel like they're in the scene. Even though the constant referencing is obnoxious as all could be, it is cool to see some of these characters in a 3D space and how they're translated. Some of the live action characters, not so much. Pennywise, Batman, Catwoman. I mean, th these characters just look terrible. They don't look anything. Mr. Freeze looks awful. The mask is in there. Jim Carrey or bust is what I say. Get out of there. You're not the mask. You're not even Jamie Kennedy's mask. And that was terrible. Honestly surprised they couldn't just get Jamie Kennedy to be in it. What, what, what is that guy doing? As much as I eat up the music in the original, I will say the new film does look pretty. It has cool sound effects. It's got everything you look for in a, you know, a big budget film. Although the music is definitely lacking. I'm gonna give this round to Space Jam A New Legacy. Well, there you go. My thoughts on Space Jam versus Space Jam A New Legacy. Hope you had a little fun. Did you agree with my thoughts or do you have some of your own feelings? Put them in the comments. Make sure to like the video if you had a good time. And oh, I almost forgot. I poll my audience. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't. And you can take part in future movie feuds. Let's see how they thought. Ouch. They're almost in full agreement with me here with only 9% going to Space Jam 2, making the original the king at 91%. Sorry, King James, you've been dethroned. All right, thanks for watching. I'm Adam, and this is more than just reviews. This is Movie Feuds. Thank you again for watching the video. Hope you had a good time. I have a whole bunch of movie feeds on this channel. So once again, I implore you to subscribe if you haven't already. I am all over the place though. You can recently find me on Twitch at Adam Olinger. I'm also on TikTok at Adam Does Movies. I have a second channel called Adam Olinger. It really jumps between my first and last name and Adam Does Movies, depending on what the conversation's about.